no sensation, no movement. A disabled motocross rider is part of a restorative center in Northridge that helps others like himself with spinal cord injury. An exhibit in Los Angeles opens celebrating 40 years of a popular Japanese cartoon character. Right now we need it. I mean, there's so much going on. Police patrolling Compton schools have been given the okay to carry weapons. This is Valley View News. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Courtney Faust. And I'm Melissa Trahan. A group of missing hikers has been found safe after spending a cold night in Eden Canyon. Helicopters searched for the 15 hikers early Monday morning. The four teenagers and 11 adults were from a Huntington Park church. The hikers say they got lost but were able to call relatives on cell phones. A helicopter crew found the group on a muddy mountainside. They were lightly dressed in shoes, shorts and t-shirts. Three search and rescue teams had already looked for the group on foot overnight, but poor visibility had forced authorities to bring the helicopters. Police are investigating the death of a man inside a UC Berkeley fraternity house. The unidentified body was found in the Zeta Psi house. Police say the body is not that of a student or member of the fraternity. The person apparently did know people living there. It was unclear if drugs or alcohol were involved, but it appeared that there was a party at the fraternity house the night before. The city of Compton has decided its police need more powerful weapons to provide security in the city's schools. Valley View South Samoya takes a trip to Compton High School for more on the controversy of arming the police. The Compton Unified School District is the latest to authorize campus police to carry high-power weapons in their arsenal. District board members approved the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle unanimously over the summer. School Police Chief William Wu made arguments to board members regarding statistics of mass shootings at schools. There are mixed opinions from parents over school police being armed with high-powered assault rifles. Right now we need it. I mean, there's so much going on in the city of Compton. We want to stay prepared at all times. And if the board is for it, I'm for it. Pues yo no estoy de acuerdo porque cómo vas, cómo van a estar I don't agree with it. How can school police officers be militarized? We'll begin to fear them because they've been granted the use of excessive force. Parents not only have concerns of the school board's bill passage last summer, they are also upset school officials did not inform nor invite them to be part of the discussion. Compton is just one of few school districts in Southern California to arm their campus police with assault rifles. Others believe there are better alternatives to equipping school police with high-power weapons. Using weapons as a form of solving a problem is not going to take care of our issues here in the schools nor in the community. So it would be important to put money into programs on campuses, off-campus, satellites, where students who have emotional issues or problems or probably could even fall into an area that they would be deemed a problem could go and receive support. A phone call was made to district officials regarding this controversy, but an interview could not be granted. However, they released a statement saying their primary concern is the safety of students, teachers, and staff at Compton Unified School District. In Compton, South Samoa, Valley View News. Hundreds of mourners gathered in Silmar to pay tribute to a young Army veteran who was shot and killed last week. Authorities say 21-year-old Francisco Garcia was gunned down in front of a party. Witnesses say Garcia was walking to another location after leaving the party when two vehicles stopped near him. A man then allegedly got out of a dark SUV and yelled at Garcia. The attacker then took a handgun from a white sedan and fired at Garcia. Garcia died at the scene from a gunshot wound. Police say no arrests have been made so far. President Obama has ordered more U.S. troops to Iraq, doubling the number of American troops in the country. The Americans are being said to train Iraqis in the battle against the terror group ISIS. The administration sent an additional 1,500 troops, but said it is not an indication that the anti-ISIS plan is failing. Obama said he does not want to take any chances with ISIS. ISIS has prolonged the fight with various strategies. Obama says the airstrikes have been very effective in degrading ISIS capabilities and slow its advances. Open enrollment for Obamacare will be available until February 15th, but the Los Angeles Times reports many Latinos are reluctant to enroll. People living in the U.S. illegally are not eligible for health law coverage. Some residents don't want to answer enrollment questions because they worry it could lead to deportation of family members. Covered California wants to sign up 500,000 more people by mid-February. 62% of those who are uninsured are Latino. 
A nurse who refused to be quarantined after treating Ebola patients is planning to travel to Southern Maine. Nurse Casey Hickox will be traveling with her boyfriend but did not reveal the exact destination. A judge ruled in her favor after local health officials failed to provide sufficient evidence that she needed to be quarantined. This is something my partner and I like to do. Since we've moved here, this has been our trail. Are you afraid with the state police around? I'm not afraid. Have you heard anything from your lawyer? I sure haven't. No, nope, we're still waiting, waiting to hear from the state of Maine to see what they want to do. I hope that we can continue negotiations and work this out amicably. Hikos had recently returned from West Africa where she treated Ebola patients. She tested negative for the disease and has not shown any symptoms. A local judge ordered Hikos to notify health authorities if symptoms appeared during her trip. Arizona voters have passed a measure to block state funding for any federal law the state believes is unconstitutional. The proposal barely passed with 51 percent of the vote. Proposition 122 is expected to defund the Affordable Care Act in Arizona as its first action. A Prop 122 spokesman expects the measure's success will lead other states to defund federal laws they think are unconstitutional. The midterm election has left Republicans as a new majority in the U.S. Senate. Valley View News reported Marcelino Rallo sampled opinion on what might be in store. The control over Senate means different things for many across the U.S., but with the Republican Party now in control, voters in Los Angeles have a few concerns of their own. I feel really strongly that most of the Republican Party wants to take a lot of rights and choices away from women. Voters have given Republicans full control over Senate, but what does that mean for the future of Americans? Probably uh, something along the lines of uh, deregulation in and amongst uh, our regulatory agencies. So that's probably what's on the horizon. Make our economy more competitive so to create more job opportunities and then we have to tackle head on this problem of skyrocketing college tuition where people are paying a lot of money, a uh, lot more money than they should be for their college education. Obama could be faced with proposals to repeal Obamacare and budget cuts to many other programs, but Obama is eager to work together with the Republican Party to strengthen the economy. What he has accomplished with a Congress that was dead set against cooperating with him at all for six years, what he's accomplished is extraordinary. It's historic. You know, when President Obama was elected, he was seen as someone who was outside of Washington, who would change Washington, change America for the better. Now he's seen as a representative of everything that's wrong with government. Some voters are not satisfied with the direction of the administration, but many Republican officials are now seeking bipartisanship to ensure a more functional running Congress. But in order to make progress, more citizens need to start voting. The fact that we have a Republican-dominated House is due to the fact that we have Republican-dominated state houses. So it really comes down to what, what we're doing locally. And I think we really need to get people out there voting more often, voting into what they need to be voting to, uh, instead of just letting, letting the, the small majority you know, do their voting for them. It is a right that we have to vote. But I think it's even more of a responsibility to that right to be educated on what we're talking about and what we're voting on. Some voters in Los Angeles have concerns from an economic standpoint, but if there will be a more bipartisan Congress, some of those concerns may be alleviated. Reporting from West Hollywood, Marcin Arallo for Valley V News. Hundreds of protesters in the Mexican state of Guerrero have attacked government buildings. Protests began after authorities confirmed hitmen from a gang had murdered 43 students in the town of Iguala. The murdered students were traveling near Iguala to protest discriminatory hiring practices and collect funds for college. The mayor of Iguala and his wife were arrested for hiring cartels along with policemen to kill and dispose the bodies. 47 people have been killed and 79 wounded in Nigeria in a suicide bombing outside his school. Police say the attacker was disguised as a student when he set off for the explosion at a boarding school. The terror group Boko Haram is the prime suspect. Police say the Islamic militant group has carried out other deadly attacks on schools teaching Western subjects. In February, Boko Haram killed at least 40 students when they opened fire in student hostels in a boarding school. LA Galaxy's forward Landon Donovan isn't retiring just yet. Find out what he did to keep his last season going. And see how one man's spinal injury inspired him to help others. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised.
practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Now let's go to Mahina Haino with sports. I hear the Lakers got their first win. That's right, but before we get to that game, let's talk football. Things are a little bitter and a little sweet for the Cardinal fans. The Cardinals now have the best record in the NFL after pulling away from the St. Louis Rams 31-14. But Carlson Palmer will miss the rest of the season after tearing his ACL in the fourth quarter. If you look up the phrase, beat down in the dictionary, you will see a picture of the Green Bay Packers destroying the Chicago Bears. Aaron Rodgers threw six touchdown passes as the Packers annihilated the Monsters of Midway 55-14. The Denver Broncos delivered a beatdown of their own against the Oakland Raiders 41-17. The Dallas Cowboys got back on track by defeating the Jacksonville Jaguars 31-17. And the San Francisco 49ers squeezed out a close one in New Orleans against the Saints. Final score 27-24. And right now, I can't think of anything sweeter than an AFC championship game like this. Peyton Manning versus Tom Brady, Broncos, Patriots, Mile High Stadium. Mississippi State is leading the NCAA college football playoff rankings with a record of 8-0. Florida State is right behind the Bulldogs, coming in second with the same record. Auburn is in third with the 7-1 record after a loss to Texas A&M. The Oregon Ducks follow right behind Auburn after beating Utah Utes 51-27 with an 8-1 record. And the Alabama Crimson Tide rounds out the top five with a 7-1 record. Other teams that made the top ten are TCU, Kansas State, Michigan State, and Arizona State. A Simi Valley motocross rider was given a second chance at life after an injury almost killed him in 1999. Valley View News reporter Lauren Bennett explains how he's helping others with physical disabilities. You know, I heard that, and it was like a light switch, literally you know, flipping the light switch off to my entire body, no sensation, no movement. Those were the first feelings Aaron Baker felt after landing on his neck on a test jump at a racetrack in Simi Valley in 1999. He had just turned professional a year before. The engine on his bike kept malfunctioning, so Baker and his team kept making adjustments. But it had one major glitch on the largest jump Baker was attempting. He broke cervical vertebrae 4, 5, 6 in his neck. In the hospital, Baker's heart stopped. And then I heard the machines flatline, and that whole, you know, one minute experience was incredible. The moment I did finally release and allow myself to just let go uh, was tremendous. It's scary as hell, but then that moment is not. The nurses resuscitated him, and now he walks. Baker had to go through years of gaining his strength back. This is when he met his mentor and future business partner, Taylor Isaacs. There has to be a facility in which someone could maximize the recovery from a disabling condition, and that was the origin of CORE where we're bridging the gap between physical therapy and personal training through restorative exercise. There are eight restorative exercise specialists at CORE. They help from spinal cord and orthopedic conditions to stroke victims. Aaron's accomplishments motivates his clients. Yeah, Aaron's been a huge inspiration. I mean, he was obviously never supposed to move anything again, you know, and he's walking, you know. Same, same as being a prognosis, I'm a walking quad, <laughs> you know, so. But I don't care if they call me. I mean, I know who I am and what I can do, and that's all that matters. It's been 15 years since Aaron Baker's accident, but that has not stopped him from recently getting engaged this past year and also keeping a positive aspect on life. In Northridge, Valley View News, Lauren Bennett. The Los Angeles Lakers finally won their first game of the regular season. The Lakers beat the Charlotte Hornets 107-92. That makes the Philadelphia 76ers the last team in the NBA without a win this season. 
Kobe Bryant and Jeremy Lin each scored 21 points and Carlo Boozer added 16. For the Hornets, Al Jefferson scored 23 points and Kemba Walker added 17. The Lakers were down by seven before a 25 to six run in the third quarter gave the Lakers the lead. Bryant says the Lakers defense was a big reason they won. The Lakers were on the road for the next couple of games facing the Memphis Grizzlies and then the New Orleans Pelicans. Time for hockey. In the NHL, the defending champions, LA Kings, are picking right up where they left off, abusing the Vancouver Canucks Nets 5-1. The Anaheim Ducks commanded the best record in the NHL West, but they lost to the Canucks 2-1. I know I'd sure love to see another Ducks-King freeway series come playoff time. The LA Galaxy beat Salt Lake City 5-0, and that landed the team a spot on the Western Conference Championship. Landon Donovan scored three of his goals for the first playoff hat trick. Donovan scored at the 10th, 54th, and 72nd minute. Marcelo Sarva scored the fourth team goal, and Robbie Keane scored with an assist from Donovan. Donovan had earlier announced his retirement, but now he and the Galaxy are fired up. Some people are taking a different approach in exercise by joining CrossFit. This intense exercise has been criticized for being dangerous, but many people say it is the best way to work out. Valley View reporter Andrew Pitters has more on the demanding and controversial workout. Fitness is generally viewed as a positive lifestyle choice. CrossFit is the black sheep of the fitness world, and it carries the heavy burden of being seen as a dangerous activity. CrossFit itself consists of a range of full body exercises, including Olympic lifting, gymnastics, and functional movement. It is meant to be fast and intense to train the human body for any situation. Physical trainer at Body Dynamics, Jackson Metakekia, says it is CrossFit's extreme nature that can lead to back, joint, and muscle injuries. I would say improper technique, bad form, or uh, overuse. U using the same body parts over and over with improper technique and weight. CrossFitters themselves believe too much blame is placed on the sport itself. They say that like any sport, human error and lack of training are large factors in any injury. The dangers that are in CrossFit are the same dangers that are in any other form of exercise. If you're not doing something properly, if you don't have someone teaching you the proper way of doing it, you're going to get injured. One of the best ways for people to avoid getting hurt is to find a gym where the coaches are certified personal trainers who have been doing CrossFit for years and know all of the mechanics. These coaches will put more emphasis on teaching muscle memory with low weight until people are ready to advance. With more than 25 gyms in the San Fernando Valley alone, CrossFit is managing to fight through the skepticism and maintain a highly dedicated membership. Yeah, people, people who do CrossFit are very diehard. Um, they're very, very into um, the community of it, which I think is the biggest factor. Um, Whenever you go to a gym, um, if it's a good gym, if it's a strong gym, um, you'll have a lot of people who are hanging out all the time. It's that sense of community that motivates CrossFitters to look past the controversy and continue to achieve new goals. In Northridge, I'm Andrew Pitters for Valley View News. That's it for sports. Now back to you. Up next in business and entertainment, American Airlines is expanding at LAX. And Pixar's Toy Story is making its way back to the big screen. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. And now, here's James Jewett with Business and Entertainment. James? Thank you, Melissa. U.S. unemployment is now at a six-year low. October unemployment fell slightly below 6%. It's the ninth month in a row the nation has created more than 200,000 jobs. President Obama says it's not only government jobs being created. Uh, our private sector has now added 10.6 million new jobs uh, over the last 56 months, and this is the 
uh, strongest job growth that we have seen uh, since the 1990s. There may be more jobs, but figures also show American workers aren't earning much more money. Wages only rose 2% in October. The increase was barely enough to cover the rate of inflation. President Obama is calling on federal regulators to toughen proposed net neutrality rules. The president released a two-page statement and two-minute video to argue for the toughest possible regulation of Internet service providers. Obama said that ever since the Internet was created, it had been open, fair, and free. Federal Communications Commission Chair Tom Wheeler said he was grateful for the president's input and that the FCC has more work to do. Broadband providers said Obama's proposals risked harming the Internet. The controversial issue has flooded the FCC with a record four million comments. American Airlines is expanding its position as the largest airline at LAX. The airline is moving to another terminal to be closer to its partner, United Airways. The two airlines serve 18% of all LAX passengers. Competitors Delta and U.S. Airways combine to serve 15%. America is expected to fill even more terminals as its expansion continues. An English professor at CSUN has passion for both language and comedy. How words may be used to make us laugh. Valley View's Lauren Bennett reports from Studio B. I'm here with Jose Alvarez, a Cal State Northridge English professor and a comedian. How'd you relate those two for your profession? Well, it's funny because my profession is teaching and then comedy is just a, a thing. I guess it's a ho more of a hobby that I've really like entertained for a long time. But um, I took a comedy writing class in when I, I, was, I was here for, uh, right before I graduated with a master's from the master's program at Cal State Northridge. And it was a comedy writing program Nobody told me that we were going to be performing the comedy and s until like halfway into the semester the uh, instructor was like, so how would you guys like to perform the comedy you wrote? And he took us out into the uh, comedy scene under like the, some weird bar in Hollywood and we all just got up and did comedy and it was kind of exhilarating and fun and that's how really it started. It came natural to you? Well, for me, yeah. I think some. Some, some of the other students didn't really like pursue the comedy thing. They thought maybe the idea of writing comedy was better than performing the comedy, but for me it was like, hey, this is fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was cool. So is there any history with the English language and comedy that helps you when you're on stage? I don't know. You know, it's, it's weird because, like, do you know who George Carlin is? I've heard of him. You've heard of him? I that's don't a, know that's, who a, he is. that's a shame, first of all. You need, to, you need to go watch some George Carlin. But he, he, and there are comedians who do, like, they'll, they're, they have comedy bits on weird phrases on the English, English language, and so they'll, they'll play around with the actual, like, language. Like, I, I don't know if I can, I can't really <laughs> say George Carlin's material on here, but. Mm -hmm. um, you could quote him. It's pretty, like, he uses the S word a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can say that on yeah. here. Um, so he he does play with like the the actual language, whereas um, I'm looking at more at like how the English language, because um, I'm I'm a rhetoric and composition guy. That's like my that's my emphasis okay. is rhetoric. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm I'm more kind of playing around with the. The, the rhetoric that's out there and reshaping the rhetoric and sort of talking about talking in, about and questioning the the stuff that's like out there okay the you know what I don't know I guess topical news is is always like you know something that people are interested in and so there are all these things that people believe and sometimes they're like unfounded and not logical and so comedians what they do a lot is they try and like question that well thank you so much jose alvarez for You're being welcome. here thank you for having me yeah this, and this was fun good luck on your comedy road yeah i'll need it thank you we'll be looking for you out there thank you disney becomes an even bigger giant as it brings in 145 billion dollars more than it did last year the entertainment company's profit rose 20 percent and disney chairman and chief executive robert Iger says the revenue increase comes from its film division the revenue spike would not have happened without the purchasing rights to Marvel and Lucasfilm. Disney has made 13 movies in the past three years. 
Iger's plan is to increase that number to 21 movies for the next three-year period. Disney and Pixar have announced they have plans to release a fourth installment of Toy Story. The last time the flick's popular characters Woody and Buzz were on the screen was in 2010. Pixar chief John Lasseter directed the first two films and will be back to direct the popular movies once again. The animated family film is set to hit theaters in 2017. Nicki Minaj is receiving a lot of criticism for her new music video. Her song titled Only has animated figures that remind many people of Nazi propaganda. Critics say the video is offensive to Jews, especially relatives of those killed in the Holocaust. Other singers like Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, and Drake are also in the music video. Minaj hasn't responded to the controversy. Madonna's clothes have sold for millions at a celebrity auction in Beverly Hills. The pop star's jacket from Desperately Seeking Susan sold for a record $252,000. And the dress she wore when she married actor Sean Penn in 1985 sold for a little over $81,000. A gown from the singer's Material Girl music video brought in more than $73,000. The Like a Virgin singer helped Julian's auctions raise a total of $3.2 million. The popular Japanese character Hello Kitty is celebrating her 40th anniversary this year. The Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles is honoring her with an exhibition. Valley View News reporter Eddie Gaiona took a look inside. Hello! Exploring the super cute world of Hello Kitty is the first ever exhibit of its kind. This is breaking, our, breaking records for attendance. Um, it's interesting, it's, it's provocative. Um, it's got some wonderful art and artifacts in it as well. The global icon was created and introduced back in 1974. Her first appearance was on a small vinyl coin purse just like this one. There are over 500 items to see and she's even on men's boxers. Margarita Loesa has been a fan of Hello Kitty since the beginning and sees a bright future for her little friend. I think it'll just keep getting bigger. I think, you know, little girls are growing up with it and you're teaching it to your daughters and people keep liking it. The second part of the exhibition includes 40 mixed media works by contemporary artists. So far for me, this is really interesting. I like to see other artists, um, their interpretation of what, you know, Hello Kitty looks like for them, you know. Yummy Gummy Kitty is a mixed media sculpture by contemporary artist Jonathan Stein. But you don't have to be an artist to express what Hello Kitty means to you. Fun and also uh, friendship. And I think it's just a wonderful thing for the kids to attach themselves to, which is something that is wholesome. Celebrities are in love with the Japanese character as well. Pop star Lady Gaga wore this one-of-a-kind Hello Kitty dress for a photo shoot in honor of Hello Kitty's 35th anniversary back in 2009. And singer Katy Perry rocked this Hello Kitty outfit on the red carpet of the Brit Awards that same year. Hello. Exploring the super cute world of Hello Kitty opened to the public last month and will run through April 26th of next year. All museum visitors will get one of these in downtown Los Angeles. I am Eddie Gaona, Valley View News. That's all for business and entertainment. Back to you guys. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Melissa Trahan. And I'm Courtney Faust. Have, Have a, a great, great day. day.